We welcome you to the Father's house. We're going to begin today by singing When I Saw the Cleansing Fountain. Oh, how precious was his blood. When I saw the cleansing fountain, oh, how precious was his blood. Oh, how precious was his blood. Oh, the way.
Yeah. 
glad in the Lord today. Praise the Lord.
of all that I have for them. When they see the supernatural even before it comes. When they speak forth my word only to watch that to come to pass. For it is that hour and it is that time. A glorious hour. A glorious time. A time for the church such as the church has never seen. A time in which my church shall rise to the very top and flow in the gifts as I have called them to flow in. They shall operate in a realm far above the realm that they operate in now. And they shall walk in a newness of power that they have never received before. For it is the last days, the end time hours, the hours when I'll fulfill all of my word, all of my promises shall be fulfilled. Every one shall come to pass. And as you read them, as you watch them, you shall see them as they come to pass. Not so with the world, for it's a terrible hour for the world. An hour of great darkness. An hour of great defeat. Even for the lukewarm Christians, it shall be an hour of disaster. An hour of so much trouble, they'll not know which way to turn. And the pressure that shall be up on them shall be so great, they'll even forget to turn to me because of where they are. Oh, the things that shall take place from this night forward saith your father God I did not say day because it will start at the night and it shall continue and grow worse and worse and worse and you shall see it the signs of war shall be much clearer and you can see there's no way of avoiding it the shortages the droughts the famine the global warming have you noticed what time of year it is? Oh, I say unto you, open your eyes bright. Don't squint at the light, but open your eyes bright. 
see, know, understand. For truly you need to walk as heirs and joint heirs. You need to walk in the fullness of all the things that I have given unto you. You need to be all that I, your Father God, said you could be. Don't lag behind. Don't fool yourself. For when you fool yourself, you deceive yourself and disaster comes. In the house that has prepared itself for me, saith God. For the house that has dedicated itself unto me. For the heart that has said, Lord, have your way in my life. But I tell you, my spirit cannot move in the vessel that has not prepared itself, saith God. Behold, I am ready to do great and mighty things. It is still not too late to prepare your heart, saith the Lord. Give it unto me that I might make it ready quickly, saith God, and use you in this last hour. For there are many who hear not, who listen not, who pay not attention, and therefore they know not the things that are happening. They're in a dark room and do not even know it. And there is no light switch in that room. There is no way for them to turn on the light to see. They need to come out, come out and walk by my side. For as they come out and walk by my side, then they shall walk in the light that I have given unto them. Be not deceived, for I am not mocked, says God. What have I said that I will not do? Everything I have said to you I will do. Follow me, I will do it. Oh, me. 
Welcome you to the Father's house, Pastor Dennis. <clears throat> All right, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Time to honor the Lord in our giving. Praise God. I trust joy is filling your heart as you give to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Two offerings as always. Tithes and offerings and our pastor's love offering. Father, we thank you and praise you for everything, Lord. We just uh, thank you for the money placed in our hands. And we thank you for the joy that fills our hearts as we give to you, Lord. So just bless gift and giver today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, we've officially entered the Christmas season, although it's hard to <laughs> hard to fathom. It's just on us again already, and uh, so many things taking place. Praise the Lord. A uh, reminder, uh, it is missions offering tonight, so bring your missions offerings with you. Praise the Lord. A lot of things taking place this month. Uh, 
Next weekend on Saturday will be adult game night here at the church at 530. Uh, the week after that is the adult progressive supper. That's coming up fast. <laughs> it's like, wow. Uh, that's also on a Saturday night. The following week after that is the Christmas program in the evening. And the week after that is Christmas. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, it's not in the bulletin, so. All right. What's that? Yes. All right. And December 15th, of course, is the pastor's birthday, so that's in this month. And uh, we are looking forward to that. Praise God. If you remember the prophetic word that came? Looking to see some powerful things. Praise God. Amen. All right. Juanita, I guess you're singing this morning. reach out your hand. Who am I that you would give me strength to stand? A sinner such as me, so unworthy and unclean, I should have been the one that they crucified. But at the cross, you laid down your life, so I could find mine. No, I've never known a love like this before. You hung on a tree, the very thought of me. Who am I? Who am I that you would look on me with love? All my stains have been covered by your blood. Saved by grace and faith, when you came, you made the way. Whosoever will may come and be free. At the cross, you laid down your life so I could find mine. No, I've never known this love before. You hold on a tree. The very thought of me, all I can say is who am I? Though I realize my situation, crying out in desperation, you're on my knees. I'm giving. You laid down your life so I could find mine. Oh, I 
I've never known this love like this before You hung on a tree The very thought of a wind And all I can say Is that the cool You may know your love So I could find mine All right, Brother Roger is speaking to us this morning, and uh, praise God, Brother Roger, we're looking forward to, are you wired up and ready to roll or not quite, oh, okay, praise God, all right. Good morning, everybody. The Lord was showing me when I was sitting up front this morning that there are two types of harvest. The wheat harvest, but also the tear harvest. The wheat and the tares. I remember there was a time in my life I was ripe unto harvest. This was before I got saved. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. You have two two types of work of God. Or no, one type of work of God, but two types of um, work that are happening on the earth. You've got the work of Christ and you've got the work of the Antichrist. And the work of the Antichrist worked diligently to try to reap me in. I'll never forget. But I thank God there was a word in my heart that I had been taught over the years. This was when I was 19 years old. And soon after, God spoke to my heart. He was ready to reap me in. And as I listened to His voice, so I was reaped in. When I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into my life, I was baptized into Him. And I emphasize in Him. I was in Christ. Hallelujah. And so when our Lord, we understand He died on the cross and He was crucified because I'm now in Him. I was crucified with Him. Hallelujah. I was buried with Him. And I rose with Him. Now you might say, well, what are you still doing here, Brother Roger? Well, I want you to know that that was positionally, spiritually, but one day it's going to happen, and I'm looking forward to that. Hallelujah. We're just going through the time of being buried with Him, so to speak, a time of sanctification with what we're all being going through, and one day we're going to be glorified. We're going to receive our new bodies. Hallelujah. And that is the great hope. I look forward to that. How about you this morning? Hallelujah. Glory, yes, Jesus died on the cross. We couldn't do it, but because we accepted Him, we were united with Him. And I tell you, that's an exciting word. The title of the message I have today is, The Old Paths Are God's Paths. The Old Paths Are God's Paths. And if you were really listening closely, you would have known already what part of the old path that I walked already. I heard the voice of God. So turn with me, if you will, to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6. We're going to look at a couple of verses there and understand at a time of Jeremiah, the people of God, the Israelites, had were in a, a bad place. They had fallen away from listening to the voice of God. 
and began to follow after religions that were not of the Lord. And how many of you know the Scriptures teach that judgment begins with the house of God? Well, judgment came to the house of God. To Judah and to Israel. And they were warned over and over and over again by the prophets. Oh, how we need to hear the prophets. Because the prophets speak for God. And the prophets tell us the way of escape if we'll listen. And God's voice is so clear today. He's telling us and speaking to us and giving the opportunity because if we don't hear the voice of God, oh, we'll be part of the wrong harvest. That's right. Amen. Let's look at Jeremiah now, 6, 16, and 17. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways. He's already telling them a command to stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. To ask requires something very important, humility. If we don't have humility in our heart, we'll never see and understand the paths of God and what He has for us. Change always requires humility. Where is the good way and, the, and walk therein? And you shall find rest for your souls. Hallelujah. But they said, we will not walk therein. Verse 17, also I set watchmen over you. Do you know how precious it is, precious it is to have a watchman? Do you know how precious it is to have a pastor in a church that will bring us the word of God, teach us the word of God, and help us follow after the Lord, who will take the time to pray and intercede on our behalf? It is an awesome, wonderful thing to bring us to the green pastures, the spiritual pastures, amen, that the Lord God has for us. And that is his word that we can eat and feast upon and enjoy and grow thereon. Without that, oh, all you got to do is think back before you got saved, what it was like. No green pastures, nothing but weed, so to speak. <laughs> Very much of a time of frustration. Places of the desert without provision. Well, I'll tell you what. God brought rest for our souls. When we heard his voice and obeyed his voice and was brought into his pasture. Amen. And was brought into the part of his flock. Amen. Into the fold of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, I set watchmen over you saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. You know, God's voice is like a trumpet. When God spoke to the Israelites, amen, at the mountain of God, it was like the sound of a trumpet. And how many know there's going to be that final trump? Hallelujah. And if we haven't been following the trumps of God and listening to the voice of God, we're going to miss that trump. But if we've been hearing the voice of God, when that trump goes off and that shout goes forth, we're going up. Amen. Hallelujah. How exciting. Yeah. But what did they say? We'll not listen. We'll not hearken. Right. Oh, yeah. you know, I get a chance to see all kinds of churches, all kinds of preachers on television. And the things that I've been seeing on some of these churches is tremendously shocking. Because a lot of what I'm seeing is the result of those who said, I want to do it my way. I have my own agenda. And uh, I want to have my own religion. And the Bible says that's like the way of Cain. Remember Cain? He wanted his own way, wanted to offer his own sacrifice. And guess what he did immediately? He dishonored the holiness of God. He dishonored the word of God. He was no longer humble, but became filled with pride. And that's a dangerous place to be. We can't truly come to the cross of Jesus Christ until we have humbled ourselves. But it is also something that we do throughout our walk in the Lord every day. Every week, every month, every year, it's a humble thing. Knowing that we can't do it ourselves. 
And like the scriptures teach in Philippians 2.12, says work out your salvation. That means you already got it. You don't have to work at it. You already got it. You don't have to earn it. But you just need to work it out. Walk therein. Hallelujah. And that is a tremendous process of sanctification, of being holy as He is holy, which is the command of the Lord God, as we read in the Scriptures. Hallelujah. Even the New Testament Scriptures. Hallelujah. We don't know how to do it, brothers and sisters, but God does. And we allow Him to live in us and through us. Hallelujah. But you know this rebellious attitude they took. What does the Scripture say about rebellion? We know what the Scripture says. We know what God said in, in, in 1 Samuel when he was regarding King Saul, who decided he wanted to do it his own way. It says in 1 Samuel fifteen twenty three, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And if we know the Scriptures in the book of Daniel, what is going to prosper according to the Antichrist in the last days? Witchcraft. He's going to cause craft to prosper. And that's what I'm seeing today. All kinds of craft. It's very difficult to find the true that's right, that's right. church of God, that's right. body of Christ, work of God. And so it's a precious thing to be a part of it. And I believe we're a part of it here. We need to continue to walk therein and find out all what God has. But it's a process, brothers and sisters. I was thinking on the way up as I was driving with my wife and we're coming up to the church and I was thinking it's kind of like a pottery, all molded and all shaped. But the process isn't done. It's got to be tried by fire. It's got to be prepared. And that takes time. You can't just stick it into the kiln and pull it right back out. It's a process, a process of patience, a process of waiting upon the Lord. And that's what we see that's wrong with the world. They refuse to wait upon the Lord. But if those of you will wait upon the Lord, good things are the result. Man, I'm just a testimony myself. Hallelujah of of that. Waiting upon the Lord and and just waiting for Him and continuing to serve Him. And I'll tell you what, it's worth the wait. Because when the good things start coming, and the good things of God, hallelujah, they keep us going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is as the iniquity and idolatry. Not wanting to walk in God's way or path is the same as saying, I don't want God's rest for my soul. I don't want God's plan of rest for my soul. God has a plan for each one of us to rest from our own works. We try, brothers and sisters, And we found out that the only way is God's way. Amen? Amen. I tell you, I remember I was at the end of my rope. That's why I was white for harvest. And there are people that are white for harvest right now. They're at the end of the rope. God is preparing a mighty harvest. I began to see it as I was waiting upon the Lord this morning. Such a mighty harvest. And, of course, the Bible tells us, I believe it's in the book of Amos, chapter 9, that the reaper is going to overtake the sower. I'm telling you, you just think about that for a moment. Hallelujah. (laughs) You can't even work fast enough and watch the harvest fall in place. And I'll tell you what, when that harvest comes, wow, time is just going to fly because God's getting it ready, getting it ready, getting it ready. And that harvest is going to be a harvest of people that are want to hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. They've tried everything, and they've done listening to everything else, and they're just going to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Show me, Lord. They're going to be a humble people. Hallelujah for that. Hallelujah. Jesus offered rest for our soul. But it required knowing and understanding and following his way. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You've been working at it too long. The Lord says, Hey, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. And I thank God he is in heart 
and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I tell you, you know, it is a work of pride that says, I want to work this thing out myself. I can do a better job. And I tell you what, I, you know, I, I remember I was at a place like that and I actually found contentment. Then I like it the hard way. How foolish. How stupid. How dumb. Because I tell you what, it's a matter of just letting God have His way, hallelujah, following after His way, and you find that it goes a whole lot easier. And I tell you what, I'd rather get from point A to point B in fast time than what? 40 years to get there. Who wants to wait? Not me. I want to follow the Lord, and He can get us quicker where we need to be if we'll just listen to Him. And it'll take him at his word and obey him. Amen? Yeah, amen. amen. Hallelujah. God's paths require humility and ultimately the willingness to face reality. Reality. Reality about ourselves. Reality about the world. Reality about our fan- finances. Reality about our family situation. Amen? Yeah. You know, a lot of times we let, you know, the natural desire or the natural reaction is to look the other way. I don't need that, but we need to face it. And God says, I will help you. Amen. He says, don't be afraid. Right. In fact, we don't have to be afraid because the Lord has already gone the path of way that we just need to unite with Him and walk it. We don't have to fear a thing because the Lord has already conquered the devil for us. Hallelujah. All we need to do is listen to His Word. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death... I will not fear evil, for thy rod and thy staff, they shall comfort me. I tell you what, what's your rod and staff? You better know the word. Hallelujah. Because without the word, that's when fear comes. You know, we see uh, a time happening that's a lot, to me, a lot like uh, the time of Nebuchadnezzar. When he came in, and he, and this is what Jeremiah was warning him about, and he came in and took over the people of God and took them captive. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, you'll never be taken captive as long as you've got the Word of God. What is the work that we're battling against? You see it all the time and you hear it all the time. What nation is trying to come in and invade our country and has invaded our country? What nation is rising up? We see this happening all the time. It's not Isaac, is it? It's the other son. It's the one of bondage. It's the one of law, shall I say. It's the one that does not know God's word. It is one that does not know the freedom of Almighty God. And those of us who know God's word, we don't have to worry. The Bible promises we're going to do great exploits during this time that we're facing today, but we must know the word. Otherwise, you've heard the warning in the prophetic word. You won't make it. You won't conquer that which is the word of, of the tares, so to speak. The harvest that is unto ungodliness. The harvest that is being reaped for the Antichrist. That's why it says work out your salvation with fear and trembling. <laughs> but you know, the disciples asked Jesus, well, what is the work we're supposed to be doing? He says, believe. Believe. Believe me. Believe my words. Obey my words. And then the process takes... You know, when we get saved and we start obeying the Word of God, the next thing you know we do, of course, we're taught that we need to, uh, after we're baptized in Christ, is to be baptized with water. We're to be a public testimony to others that, you know, I'm a Christian. You're telling others that I'm following Christ now. I've changed. But then the Lord gives you an opportunity to be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of, you know, with the speaking of tongues, of the evidence of Almighty God. It only comes to those that are walking in Him. And with those tongues, you have all the power that you have need of to minister, to evangelize, to heal, to speak, to touch. That's all you need. Hallelujah. But what are we going to do with that gift? Are we going to sit it up on the shelf and wait? Are we going to use it now? How many of you speak in tongues? 
Be real bold. Hallelujah. And God is giving the tongues. If you don't have the tongues, how shall I put it? With the tongues, you can battle the worst forces of evil. You Why? Because you're no longer using this. You have the mind of Christ when you have the almighty tongues of God. God speaks to your heart because you don't know what to pray. You don't know what to do, really. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 tells us that. While we're weak in that, he tells us if we'll pray in the Spirit, pray in that language, amen, he will give us the wisdom that we have need of. While the world is trying to figure it all out, God's already got it figured out for you. God's already got it figured out for us already ahead of time. The plans of the Lord are to prosper us, amen, not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future, amen. I want the plan of God in my life. Hallelujah. I know what it's like to not have the plan of God. I don't want to go there again. Hallelujah. So I want to humble myself. I want to face reality. Accepting God's rest is the willingness to accept God's reality, which tells us that without God, we're nothing. Without God, we're nothing. And you might say, man, that's a humbling statement to say, Brother Roger, but I'm facing reality. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm nothing. Suppose I lived 100 years on this earth, but I can't live for eternity. I'm nothing. Amen. But if I'll accept the word of God, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and his word, he promises me eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now i got something to live for. Yes. Amen. And all I can do is boast in the one who's given it unto me, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And him crucified. And me and him. And him and me. Hallelujah. In order to come to God, we must first come, of course, to his cross, which is the place where we die. Amen. Die to ourself. Lord, I can't do it myself. I need you. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I recognize I'm going to hell. I'm desperate for you. And just that quick, we become baptized into him, and he fills us with his power to become his son. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the place where we die are buried and are risen with the one who gives us life. Colossians 2, 10 to 12 says, And you are complete in him, which is the head of the principality and power. You are complete in him who is head over every principality and power, and whom also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. Spiritual circumcision. Hallelujah. God does a work in our heart. Hallelujah. God's doing a work in your heart this morning. Hallelujah. And if you'll let him, hallelujah, he who begins a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians 1, six that tells us that. He who began a good work shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. But we've got to continue to do something. The Lord used to speak to this church a lot. He doesn't speak anymore, by the way. You don't hear it too often, do you, Pastor Evans? He says, go forward. I think we're going forward, church. I think we're ready to apprehend all that God has for us. We're no longer looking back. We're not like like Lot's wife who became a pillar of salt. But we're like Abraham. Pilgrims going forth to apprehend. Amen. Who's a city. Glory to God, whose builder and maker is God. And we're not going to stop until we apprehend it. Hallelujah. We're not just beginners, but we're finishers. And no weapon formed against us is going to stop us. Because we're more than conquerors through him who loves us. We are an army of God, and we're going to continue to march forward. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 When we're willing to come to the cross, a place, God then puts us in position, his heavenly place, and he fills us with his power and purpose. The ability to go to God's place, position, and purpose in this life can only happen when we become a new creation. 
And that happens only when we, we start on the pathway of God, which starts with the cross, which starts with repentance. Amen. And it's something that we need to carry right to rapture time. Hallelujah. I think what's happened with a lot of um, Christians over the years and, and is why we see a lot of trouble is they got saved, but then they just quit carrying the cross. That's right. Formed their own religion, and now they've, they've diverted off God's path, got on the Antichrist path, and are headed straight to hell. Straight to hell. The God that took away all their sins. Now they're living foolishly in the life that they live. We see this very depicted very much in Matthew 25. It talks about the ten virgins. Five were ready. When the Lord came, five were not ready. Why? They quit following the word of God. And their oil lamps became very dim. They had no longer any light to be able to go through this life. Hallelujah. And as a result, they become ripe unto the wrong harvest. Oh, that's sad. That's sad. They become part of the, the tear harvest. Hallelujah. We become born again, become a new creation. We also become part of the new generation <laughs> that has been recreated for God's new heaven and new earth. Amen. We can't be a part of God's new heaven and new earth unless we've been created for it. Reborn, recreated, born again, born in the Spirit, no longer of the flesh. Hallelujah. 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 It says here in Colossians 1.18, Christ is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Hallelujah. That in all things he might have the preeminence. See, Jesus started this new generation of eternal believers. He was the first one. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And then we were able to join. Hallelujah. And we're that we're the last generation, and I believe, without a shadow of doubt. Amen. Because all the scriptures have pointed out. Amen. We've seen the fig tree ripen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The signs are just everywhere. If you know the word of God, every day it seems like you get to see a new sign or hear about a new sign. Of all that's going on, I, I tell you, it's just so rapidly coming together. It's just amazing. The more you read the Word of God, you're saying, wow, I see that, I see that, I see that, I see that. Hallelujah. The reality of it is just coming forth, and uh, God is just revealing in just rapid speed. Hallelujah. How this is all going to take place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's why it's getting so excited for us. Hallelujah. I've been following Him and believing in Him and trusting in Him. And God's going to continue to reveal many awesome things to His church. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. But it says in verse 23 of Colossians 1, Only if you continue in the faith. That is the way of God. Faith is the pathway of God. Amen. Faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith. Hearing, believing, Amen. confessing, yes. living, hallelujah, obeying, hallelujah, faith. If you continue your faith, grounded and settled, here's what the word the Lord gave me, what grounded and settled means. Commitment and submitment. God spoke to me as a teenager. I'll never forget that. You know, because I, I wanted to find out how does this Christian walk work? I want it to work. What, what is it about it that, you know, I'm missing? And I just kept following the Lord, and finally he showed me. I was probably 20 or 21 then, that I needed to submit to him and commit to him. Submit to his authority. Commit to his word. Hallelujah. Follow after him. Oh, <laughs> makes sense. Amen. And then the, then the Lord opened up things to me. I live in Waverly, and I remember standing on Clark Street. And I'm saying, Lord, you know, as he was speaking to my heart, I'm just standing right next to the church, you know. Lord's opening my, and I says, you know, he says, I says, Lord, a lot of people don't do this. See, I had to make a choice for my own self. Right. Which way do I want to go? And I thought, well, the way they're going is not your way, Lord. Right. But you promised eternal life, Lord. That's what I want. I choose to do it. Amen. Made that decision in my heart right there. I'll never forget. Hallelujah. That's the whole key. 
Amen. Ground and set them. Be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard, which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven. Hallelujah. And God's going to pour out his spirit. I tell you, there is a generation. Oh, hallelujah. That God's going to fill glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Even that little generation right there. <laughs> Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. I tell you, God's good. I get to be a part of that. Amen. Consider for a moment the alternative of continuing in the new paths which reject humility and facing reality. You see, there's a lot of new paths going on. You know, you see Chrislam. That's a new pathway all of a sudden that the church is offering. Something they're trying to unite that God himself says can never be united? Can you unite light and darkness? Can you unite freedom and bondage? It's only one or the other, amen? Yet they're trying to unite something that God is totally against. And yet you have a whole group of churches that are following after that today. And then, of course, we've got this new Christianity. Instead of trying to reach souls... You know, with the gospel, we got a works gospel all of a sudden that's taking place. And all of a sudden, you know, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and somehow we feel good and somehow we feel that somehow that's going to bring in the harvest. But where's the gospel message? Where's the gospel message? Where's the humility? Where's the turning to the Lord? You can do that till the cows come home. Hallelujah. And not get anywhere. Hallelujah. Amen. It's all about the gospel message, which eventually got a hold of my dad's heart, got him in the church, and he began to do the things that pleased God, and God began to bless him. Hallelujah. Next thing you know, my dad, he had, we had a tent meeting right on his property. Hallelujah. And God did some mighty miracles right there in that tent. Hallelujah. People had walked in, and, and uh, they had all kinds of problems, and they walked away without those problems. And that's what it's all about. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But when we, when we reject humility and we, and we reject faith in reality, faith is also rejected. Faith is also rejected. Hallelujah. And that's what we see this, these churches doing that are rejecting the word of God, the old paths. The Bible says faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. And substance has to do with reality. Substance has to do with confident assurance. These churches that are going in there, they can't have that confident assurance because you can't line it up with the Word. The only time I know I've got confidence assurance is because I know it's the Word. I can test it according to the Word. You know, if you're an electrician today, you, you test things, amen, <laughs> to see if it's alive or not, hallelujah, and that little red light comes on. Well, if you got the word, you're going to get the red light every time, hallelujah, <clears throat> hallelujah. But if it's not according to the word, you got to reject it. you got to cast it down. you got to just not have any part of it. Because, see, the enemy is always trying to get in and insert his lie. And it's not faith. Actually, it's the opposite. It's foolishness. It's foolishness. Why is it foolishness? Because the fool has said, there is no God. There is no God. And what do we hear the world saying? I'm God. <laughs> they're making up their own religion. I tell you what, they're just, it's hay, wood, hay, wood, and stubble. No good. It's all being set up for the fire. It's a different type of harvest. We go through the fire. They're going to be burned up in the fire. That's why we need to get the gospel out. Hallelujah. Because if they're just willing to hear, hallelujah. Oh, man. And let me tell you, it's happening now. And it's going to continue on until the Lord comes back. Now is the time of the harvest. Hallelujah. Now. Hallelujah. Now is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But substance has to do with reality specifically. And, of course, faith requires humility. Because you cannot change to walk a certain path unless you humble yourself to do so. Unless you humble yourself to do so. 
You've got to humble yourself to do so. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I think we heard that in a song this morning. Hallelujah. Oh. You know, the new paths do not make use of faith. They don't make use of God's Word. <clears throat> what do they make use of? Foolishness. Psalms 5.4. What does the Bible say about foolishness? Thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness. Neither shall evil dwell there. The foolish shall not stand in your sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak or thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. Leasing is falsehood. Lies. God will destroy those who speak lies. Just because it's a, a 20,000 seat church, just because it may be inlaid with gold, just because you might have all these people that are on the platform that are they call elders and bishops, just because they have great ability on the music, Hallelujah. It doesn't make it all right Amen. when you start to hear the gospel message. Is it gospel? If you know the word and you check it, you'll find a lot of it is not. They've gone the way of Jeroboam, who led the people of God astray in years past, following after the God of gold, the God of silver. And this is what we see today. And how they utilize that is just... Crazy. They're actually believing it's going to save them in the last days. The Bible tells us that gold and silver is going to be thrown into the streets. But if we have the Word of God, if we have faith that's tried by the fire, man, there's no throwing that down. That's what's going to be able to get us to walk through like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm going to be able to walk through without even the smell of smoke. Hallelujah. We're going to do great exploits. Hallelujah. And we're going to amaze the Antichrist. <laughs> How on earth are those people doing it? They got the Word. <laughs> they got the eternal Word that endures forever, the Scripture tells us. Hallelujah. And you can't conquer the Word. You can't conquer it. You can't defeat it. You can't shut it up. You can't do anything when it comes to the Word of God. Because the Word of God is God. The Word of God is God. Hallelujah. And you can't stop Him. And if you got God in you, hallelujah, Jesus Christ, you can't be stopped. Hallelujah. How many of you believe it? Right. Amen. 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 We've got a journey to take. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And our key luggage is Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. A good faith example is, as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy. And in thy fear will I worship towards your holy temple. <sighs> Lift up holy hands. Amen. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemies. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemies. Hallelujah. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemies. Hallelujah. Make thy way straight before my face. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says in the next verse, there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very much wickedness. Those who are fools, their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. See, no faith. Flattery because no faith. They don't know how to speak because they have no faith. They have no word of God. What is God's righteousness in a straight way? Enter the King, Jesus, the Lord, our righteousness. What is God's righteousness in a straight way? Enter in the King, Jesus, the Lord our righteousness. And how did our Lord enter into Jerusalem in that last week? Hallelujah. Was he on a big white horse? He was on a donkey, wasn't he? Right. He, he was, or, or he was, he was on, well, let me put it this way, a vehicle that was very humble That's right. for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's right. Amen. But boy, oh boy, when they saw him coming, Hallelujah. They began to shout praises unto Him. They began to lay down, hallelujah, their garments. They began to lay down their, their, the palm branches. Amen. And they began to say, blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. As He came in humbly. Hallelujah. 
We're to be no different. We need to make all our entrances like that in humility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because one day we're going to make a different kind of entrance. According to Revelation chapter 19, man, we're going to come with all of the power of God. We're going to ride white horses. We're going to follow Jesus who's going to be on a white horse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Scriptures tell us. We're not just telling you a fairy tale. This is what the Scriptures tell us. Hallelujah. And we're going to come in and we're going to see the result of the Antichrist harvest. And that Antichrist harvest is going to be destroyed. Hallelujah. More could be said about that, but I don't want to stick with that. We need to go down the right path and reject the wrong path. It says in 1 Corinthians 1.18, the preaching of the cross, which is the right path, is to them that perish foolishness. What do you mean deny myself? I want to exalt myself. No, no, no. Deny yourself. That's the preaching of the cross. Deny yourself, you know, so you can take the yoke of the Lord Jesus. Amen. But to the world and the false church, uh uh-uh. I want to exalt me. Look at me. I want a name for myself. I want everybody to notice me. We're nothing. Amen. The only thing I want people to notice in me is Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. And if they say, well, here comes that Jesus freak, good. Hallelujah. When Jesus comes, he comes in power. (laughs) And he comes to make a difference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's no wonder they all, it's no wonder Pastor Evans a lot of times at work, you know, they're turning their faces, they're turning away. Jesus is in me. He's coming in power. But you know, children don't turn away. Man, they draw. Man, those little children, they're just so full of faith. They, I get more hugs, I tell you. They make my day. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. All day. It's hi, Roger, hi, Roger, hi, Roger. Hallelujah. But I know it's more than that. They're seeing Jesus in me. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It says right here, and I gotta keep moving. Isaiah 65, 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered, nor shall it come into mind. Hallelujah. The scripture says, what happens? I'm, I'm going back and forth. What happens to those who refuse the recreating power of Jesus? Isaiah 66, 17, they that sanctify themselves, they that make themselves holy, they that purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the mist, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Ah, they're trying to recreate themselves. The only one that can recreate you, and I'm sure our sister Gwen knows all about this because she's teaching it, I'm sure, Jesus is the one who does the makeover. Jesus is the one. We're being formed into Him and His image. Every day we're being renewed to be like Him. Every day. Hallelujah. No wonder we're getting prettier every day. But you've got to see that prettiness. Are you looking on the outside? Are you looking on the inside? It's the inside is what counts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, you know, Jesus, when he was here on earth, he had nothing that, you know, in the natural, you know, it, it was it began as his works, his words. That's what people were drawn to. There came a time that they wanted to make him king. And I, I know i got to hustle, but they wanted to make him king, an earthly king. Is he an earthly king? He's a heavenly king. He was more concerned that we'd make him king in our heart. That's what he was. He would drew. He got off that, he got out of the way because he wanted us to see him the way he, that we're supposed to see him. The new paths are paths of destruction. The old paths are paths of construction or reconstruction. Revelation 21 1, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. One way you could look at that is there was no more dividing waters. Right. All the division was gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Access was improved greatly. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Who's that bride? Us. Us. Amen. And I heard a great voice 
out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, no crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Woo! The Bible promises us that we're going to be clothed with a body fashioned like the Lord's body. Hallelujah. Amen. This mortality will put on immortality. This corruption is going to put on incorruption. Hallelujah. Glory to God. (laughs) Whatever Adam was made out of, man, think of what Jesus is made out of. That's what we're going to be clothed with. Think about that for a minute. You know, man was made from the substance of the earth. We're going to be made with a body that's from the substance of heaven. Faith is a substance. (laughs) Keep hanging on to that faith. Hallelujah. Because it's getting us ready for all that God has for us. Hallelujah. And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. He says, And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. What are we overcoming? The new paths. We're overcoming all the new paths because they, all those new paths have new Bibles. They're corrupt. Stay away from them. That's right. They have false teachers, right. false preachers, yeah. false evangelists, yeah. false prophets. Amen. What's the other one? Pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, teachers. and apostles. All faults. It seems like, you know, there's, <clears throat> I've got to finish here, but we've got people. How many remember the days of the uh, Cracker Jack box? <laughs> seems like they're pulling out a license and says, I'm a bishop. <laughs> Overnight. <laughs> you know, and, and they get all the people who are, have itchy ears to follow them. But what do they have? They don't have the Word of God. I mean, they may be able to speak the most smoothest words, so smooth it's like oil, you know. But do they have the power of God? I only want the power. I only want the peace. If you need a touch from the Lord today, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have a heart that says, Lord, recreate in me a clean heart. If you have a vessel that says, man, I'm not filled with the Holy Ghost with the tongues, and I want that. I tell you what, today's the day. Today's the day of salvation. Today is the day to get all that God has for you. Don't miss out. I'm going to leave this on. Whatever it is, the Lord has it for you. That's right. My God does not lack. My God is a provider. If you need deliverance today, today is a good day for it.
cannot do anything because I can do all things, say the Lord, to meet every need, to meet every need that you might have.